What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and we're heading into one of the biggest fantasy football draft weekends of the entire summer. And if you're drafting on ESPN, this is the video for you because today we're going to break down how to win your ESPN Fantasy Football League and beat your friends this season. We're going to go through position by position, finding the biggest values on ESPN, the strategy I'd be using on this website, and then tie it all together and walk you through a mock draft at the end of this video. As always, if you enjoy, make sure you leave a like, subscribe. Let's go. Now, when you're preparing for your home league, the best thing you can do is, of course, knowing your league mates' tendencies, knowing your scoring settings, and then also being super familiar with the site you're drafting on. Today, of course, we're talking through ESPN, and the thing to be familiar with is their default rankings. Your league mates are not going to draft off of ADP. They're going to draft off of the default rankings that are just preloaded in the draft room, and they're just going to pick the player that sticks out among the top available guys based on these rankings. The issue is that these rankings are super soft. They're not updated very frequently, and we can exploit them by using actual real paid money league ADP, which we're going to use the NFC today. Now, I'm not affiliated with these guys. I do not have a promo code with the NFC. I just think that they have... ADP, that to me is like the sharpest version of what a home league should look like, right? We have five running backs in the first round here. This is just their ADP in the first two rounds, five running backs in the second round. It's three wide receivers, one flex, full PPR, $350 to join. We've streamed six of these so far. We do a bunch every year. As always, I stream every single night. So if you want to catch me doing live drafts, live managed league drafts as well, you can find that every single night until kickoff. And that's what these are as well. They're managed leagues, not best ball. You're setting a lineup in these leagues. And to me, it is very accurate in terms of what drafts should look like because we're using the last four days of ADP. That's about like 20 plus drafts. And we have guys like Xavier Worthy moving up. Xavier Worthy still hasn't moved up in these ESPN default rankings as we're getting a lot more news and buzz and players are moving around in terms of paid league ADP. ESPN default rankings are lagging behind. And this is where we get our edge. And I made this sheet so we can see the edge and we can see the biggest values and the worst values on ESPN. This is just the first round. So you're not going to have a bunch of big values or anything. But the way that I set it up is you have the ESPN pick on the left-hand side. That's just based on the default rankings, where that player is going. ESPN ranking is, again, just that, but in number form. Then you have NFC ADP at the far end, and that is just high stakes ADP. And the value is the difference between high stakes ADP and the ESPN default ranking so that you can see, again, the biggest values and the worst values this is going to be completely free you can find the top comment down below and you can mess around with it yourself you're going to have the top like 200 players to kind of mess around and see the biggest values for your espn draft all i ask is that if you use it leave a like and subscribe it is a whole different google sheet than the one we did before last weekend for like all the default rankings this one is just espn specifically now moving on from that Let's go position by position in terms of our strategy and just values for these ESPN drafts. And with wide receiver, this is the most important one to me. You guys know if you watch the channel, we structure everything we do around the wide receiver position. And this still holds true even in these ESPN default leagues that are two running backs, two wide receiver, one flex, half PPR. Even in this setup, among these 12 teams and 12 flex spots, according to the Destination Devi wins above replacement tool, where it goes through the replacement level players and kind of optimizes how many wide receivers, running backs, and tight ends should be in the flex spots across the entire league. Nine of 12 spots should be wide receivers, which means we want to be setting up our team in a way so that we can put wide receivers in our flex spot and always have a stacked flex. Because what people don't understand is winning the flex is the best way to get an advantage over your league mates because everyone just sees the flex as, you know what? I'll throw in a low-end RB2 in the flex. I'll throw in a, a wide receiver three in the flex. And it's like, your flex scores as many points as your running backs, right? Like, it's not like it gets a 0.5 times multiplier. Your flex is just as important as everything else. And if you want, if you can build through making the flex just as important and as good as the rest of your roster, then you're going to have a really strong team. And the way that I do this is I like to draft wide receivers through my flex plus one or two by round 10. But in these ESPN default leagues, you need to really be on top of this because you're only going to draft four to five wide receivers by round 10, right? Two wide receivers, one flex is three, plus one or two is four to five. Now, I also have it here, you know, two wide receivers, two flex is five to six, three wide receivers, two flex, six to seven. But for these ESPN leagues, 
it's two wide receivers, one flex, and then plus one or two. So that's four to five wide receivers through round 10, which gives you, what, five to six other picks for running backs, quarterbacks, and tight ends. So a big thing we need to be aware of is being very mindful when we take these receivers because we know in these home leagues, we're going to have a lot of value later on in these drafts. We're going to have, you know, Xavier Worthy in the seventh round. We're going to have Roma Dunes in the eighth round. So I think the biggest thing you can kind of take away from this is breaking ties to other positions. And I really want to hammer this home because I get this question all the time with the rankings I put out over on Patreon. Uh, This was a question I got. Just checking on your top 200 rankings, it's for 12 teams, three wide receiver, one flex, right? Trying to use for leagues with two wide receiver, one flex, and find myself taking a wide receiver five before an RB2 or filling out tight end and quarterback. And the way that I would kind of counteract this is, again, You want to be very purposeful when you take a receiver in these running back hungry leagues. You kind of want to look at my rankings. I will say as well, like I have in the directions for the rankings, don't just draft directly off my rankings. I have tiers. And I think what you want to do in these leagues is use tiers. And if you have a wide receiver and a running back or a wide receiver and tight end in the same tier, break the tie to the non wide receiver. Because again, you only need four to five through 10 rounds. That's like half of your picks not going to wide receivers. And as much as I love receivers in a format like this, half PPR, two wide receiver, one flex, you do not want to be drafting your wide receiver five before your RB2. You want to make sure you have a good starting lineup. You want to make sure you have good depth as well, but you don't want to be taking wide receivers just to take wide receivers. So have that in mind, right? If I have two wide, if I have a wide receiver and a running back in the same tier early on in the draft, break the tie to the running back just to take the position and then know wide receiver values are going to be plentiful later on, which now brings us to this. We're going to actually screen share the Excel sheet we made or the Google sheet that we made. And I'm going to show you guys the biggest values here. It's pretty crazy on ESPN. All right. Now here's what the sheet looks like. And you can kind of scroll through, see everything for yourself, right? Where you have the values across the board of like who's way higher in ESPN versus the uh, high stakes ADP. And you can kind of get a feel for yourself. You can sort it by value if you'd like to, and just kind of see from there, the biggest values or the worst values. But I want less crowded noise for you guys. So we're going to go position by position across the bottom here. And here is the wide receivers. Now, this is a big thing to note is that there's no like crazy wide receiver values early on. I guess you could kind of call Marvin Harrison Jr. and Drake London like small values, but the big values I'm going to have highlighted in green as guys that I am targeting personally. And this fourth round is crazy, right? Jalen Waddle's going in the second round on the NFC. He is a fourth rounder on ESPN. Same thing with Cooper Cup. Debo Samuel's an early third. He is a late fourth over on ESPN. Same deal with League Neighbors. Early third on NFC. He is a 4-5 turn pick. All four of those guys are absolutely smashes. And then you can see across the board, right, we're going to get Tank Dell and T. Higgins in the fifth round. We're going to get Amari Cooper at value in the sixth, along with Terry McLaurin. Same thing with, like, Rashi Rice is still, he is still 79 on ESPN, and he keeps rising in high stakes, where he is actually picked 38.6 over in high stakes. That's an early fourth that you can get in the seventh. And I honestly wouldn't even risk it. I would probably just take Rosh Rice in the sixth in an ESPN home league. But still, you're getting crazy values. Christian Watson, JSN, Lad McConkie, Roma Dunze, Xavier Worthy in the ninth, who's now going in the 60s over in high stakes. He still hasn't budged on ESPN. Again, I updated these ESPN default rankings literally today. And this is what's on the site. Um, And then Brian Thomas Jr. in the 10th. Then we have some other guys like Wicks and Polk down here in rounds like 13 plus. But these guys don't matter as much. I really want to focus on the early round guys. So the thing to really store in your head on ESPN is you're going to have receivers you really like in round four, round five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And again, we only need four to five through round 10. So just really have that in mind. And I want to carry that over to running back because at running back, you're going to see there's not a lot of values, right? But I think really the way that I would play it and the the way that I have this formatted here is the reason I did, you know, position by position is so that we could have these values and we could make them relative, right? So even like a minus 2.6 on JT is still a pretty good value in a home league because we know home league guys are going to get drafted way higher, right? Like James Cook, I love James Cook, but he's picked 25 on ESPN. He's picked 44 on the NFC. He is way pushed up. So if all the running backs are pushed up, like a minus 2.6 is actually pretty damn good value. And this is where you could talk me into, again, just knowing rounds four through 10, you're going to have receivers you really like. I think my top three, if I was playing on ESPN, I really do think if I had like the 102, I think I would go Brees Hall or Bijan over CeeDee Lamb, Tyree Kill. I think that you just, given, take your running back early and then figure it out from there. So 
I really want one of these three, and I would take them pretty much anywhere that they're available to me. Again, I think in an ESPN league, especially two wide receiver, one flex, I would go 101 McCaffrey, 102 Brees, 103 Bijan, just from where I'm sitting. Then you also have some other values. I, I will say, too, these greens aren't all value. Some of them are just personal preference. I really like Kyron Williams. In a running back hungry league, I would have no problem taking him 203. I love Devon Achan at the 2-3 turn. Jameer Gibbs in the early second is fine by me. And then there is very much a dead zone in these default leagues, right? Or default ESPN rankings where you can see Rashad White uh, pushed up around. Alvin Kamara pushed up about two rounds. Ramondre pushed up about two rounds. Amir White, same thing. Jonathan Brooks way pushed up. Um, so then, again, you got to kind of put that in your head in terms of breaking ties to running backs because you're not going to have any running backs in the fourth that are very good in terms of value or in the fifth. It's not until the sixth, and even then, it's kind of few and far between. So I would really want to come out of the first three rounds with minimum one running back, maybe even two, so that I don't have to feel pressured you know, to take a Ramondre 20 picks ahead of where he's going in high stakes or take a Zemir White 20 picks ahead of where he's going in high stakes. Um, and then even then, like round six, seven, and eight, you're still getting some pretty tough values. Like Jalen Warren, even with the hamstring stuff, 24 picks ahead of ADP. Same thing with Brian Thomas or Brian Robinson. Same thing with Ty J Spears. Same thing with Zach Moss. Zeke Elliott's even 36 picks ahead. Uh, but we do have some values. Like James Conner's a stud in the six. Najee in the seventh. Javante in the seventh is fine. Even where he most in the eighth is good too. Chase Brown in the tenth. But you can't like build your running back room out of these guys you can certainly do like a hero rb team and and have that work but two wide receiver one flex i would not do zero rb i would not run raheem Mostert as your rb1 uh and then you do have some guys late but you're gonna have a lot of like running back values late that people don't know about and you can definitely build a really good bench of running backs where you can get values on ray davis and rico dowdle and jalen wright and you know even guys down here like braylon allen is a big value so that's why I'm playing running back again. There's a dead zone, and I really do want like one to three running backs early. Now let's move on to quarterbacks and tight ends. Um, I will be honest, these home leagues have a way of pushing up your tight end and quarterbacks, but honestly on ESPN, they're not pushed up too, too bad. Um, I would say like any of these top three tight ends are actually fine. I know that it's like minus seven, minus eight, minus seven, but that's not too big of a deal. You're not paying like a round ahead of consensus, but my targets would be McBride, right? You're getting him at like a slight value. You're getting Kincaid at a slight value. Um, Kyle Pitts, you're getting at a slight value. Can Kittle, you're getting, at, or not King Kittle, George Kittle, you're getting at like, what, minus five. That's fine. Anywhere in the seventh round, George Kittle to me is absolutely fine. Um, but if you want to go late tight end, you absolutely can. I think Brock Bowers is like the biggest, like circle him and Sharpie monster value in these drafts. Uh, same with Jake Ferguson. And then if you want to go really, really late, you can go Dallas Goddard, Pat Fryermuth. T Taysom Hill is getting tight end eligibility on a lot of these sites. If you whiff on tight end, he's someone who's getting like snaps at running back. They might cut Kendra Miller. He's the one, again, if you whiff on like a top end tight end, take Taysom Hill as your tight end too. It's cheesy, but you got to play the game when you're in these leagues. And then we have quarterback, which they're not too expensive. I love Anthony Richardson, but these home league sites got to chill. He is going in the 80s on NFC. He is picked 44 on ESPN. I am not taking it. And I love Anthony Richardson. I truly do. I have a lot of him on underdog. I am not taking him over Mahomes. I am not taking him over Lamar. So for me, he's a clear fade. But all of these like elite quarterbacks here, fourth round Josh Allen is actually really sweet. Um, I, would, I would call him like a, a priority target. Same thing with Jalen Hurts. Uh, Mahomes, if you can get him to fall to the fifth round, is huge. Lamar in the fifth round is great. Uh, Dak is not a great value. I don't love Burrow here in the seventh, but you come back around and like Kyler's a great value. Jordan, or Kyler's not a great value, but I do just like him in the seven, eight turn area. It's like minus nine. That's nothing too, too crazy. Uh, Jordan Love's a value. Jaden Daniels is a value. Caleb is a value. These are the three guys where if you whiff on elite quarterback, very much can pivot to one of these three. And then if you if you miss out on them, because sometimes you do get in these home leagues, man, and they, they'll double up on quarterback before they even finish filling out their flex. It's just kind of how things go. Uh, I will say I love Aaron Rodgers, but I mean, get out of here with, you know, pick 136 ahead of Trevor Lawrence, ahead of Justin Herbert, one of the best quarterbacks in football. And then Justin Fields is free. I'm not saying Justin Fields is going to be amazing, but when Justin Fields starts games, he scores fantasy points. You can pick him up if he starts early. That is a top 8 to 12 quarterback right off the bat. If he doesn't, you throw him into the waivers and you grab a running back later on. So I think that he is a great way to play late round quarterback. And I would even throw Drake May in there as well, who's free and might be starting earlier than we think, which then brings us to the ESPN blueprint that I built for you guys. This is your all-in-one. I took all of those targets we just highlighted and I put them all into one sheet here. 
where you could just bring this with you into an ESPN draft and have a pretty good idea of the best values on the board, right? So we have ESPN rounds here, just which round uh, the default rankings have them going in, uh, wide receiver targets, running back targets, tight end targets, and quarterback targets. And it's just round by round, right? So we have the three running backs up top, Gibbs and Kyron, HN in the third. You have the wide receivers, the quarterbacks. And I think that this is just a really good overall view of kind of what we're looking for than round 11 plus. And you can see kind of the late round values. So I built that guy that for you guys. Again, if you have an ESPN draft this weekend, I think you can bring this in with you and you'll do really well. Again, you can find this down below as the pinned top comment. All I ask is that if you use the blueprint, you use the values here, just leave a like, subscribe. I'm not going to put it behind the paywall. Just leave a like and subscribe. It'll boost the video. It'll help me out a ton. And that'll be proper payment. Now, with that being said, let's get on to the mock draft. All right. And here we are. We're on ESPN. We're doing a mock draft. We're going to be using the ESPN blueprint we just built and then also the rankings over on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. You can find my top 200 cheat sheet there with my target rounds, my tiers for every single player for half PPR and full PPR drafts. I have my targets, my avoids, all of that good stuff all outlined. You can find that as well in the description and at the top of the comment section down below if you want to use it for your upcoming home league. All right, now let's lock in. I don't know how I'm going to edit this in terms of cutting around each pick and, you know, making this not like an hour plus long. Uh, I think we're going to get a lot of auto drafters already, but this is a 12 team, full PPR, two wide receiver, one flex league. You can see the picks that get made here. We have CD Lamb go 101. We'll see what Dominic's daring does. We, we are Ron's rowdy team or something like that here. But let's see. Like I said earlier, um, yeah, so he takes McCaffrey. We're going to take whatever you want between Brees, Bijan, whatever. We are going to take Brees um, as our RB1 for this team. And we'll see what makes it back around. Again, in my rankings, I have a tier of five, right? So as I've said, if, if, if I have players in the same tier, early on, I think I would just rather break the tie to running back. Uh, but I have McCaffrey, Brees, Bijan, CeeDee Lamb, Tyree Kill, all in the same tier and again. If I'm picking in the first round, I think I would rather do that because in running back hungry leagues, especially these ones, uh, running back's not going to make it back to us. You know, there's not going to be, I mean, we'll see what makes it back to us. We might go, we might double up on, on running back, but again, I would feel very queasy in these drafts coming out of the first three rounds without a running back. And this like 210 pick we're going to have is going to be uh, pretty ugly. Uh, but let's see. Bijan just went, we took Brees. Tyree kills off the board. We got Jefferson gone. Again, I don't know how I'm going to edit these. I might just kind of skip around to my picks, but we got we got 16 rounds of this, so I'm going to probably ramble on here. Nothing crazy has happened. We got Saquon going already. That's what we like to see in these drafts. Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson's gone. We'll see. And I can kind of, I, and, I, and I will say as well, I can kind of table talk here as well, which I can't do on my streams, but... We're definitely going to be looking for HN at this 2-3 turn. We'll be looking for Nico Collins. There's going to be a lot of receivers even in the third round that we like. I will say as well, when we looked at the, the blueprint, there's a lot of receiver value in the fourth, right? But that doesn't mean that you have to take your first receiver in the fourth round. Um, I still, I wouldn't mind taking one before that uh, just because, you know, of course you're going to get values later, but you also at a certain point do have to kind of swallow your pride and take a receiver just to have like a good one in your wide receiver one spot, you know? And you also never know if like a, a room is going to adhere 100% to the default rankings. But so far, that's kind of what it's been. We have, you know, uh, we're through 12 picks and the highest ranked player right now is ranked 13 on the default rankings. Like this is just, again, this is just how it goes. Because if we sort by, I mean, you can go over here and sort by ADP, but that just doesn't tell the, uh, the full story, I guess you could say. I think there is some merit to... Uh, sorting it by ADP for yourself, though, if you kind of want to see more accurate rankings. Again, if if A-Chan makes it back to us, we're probably going to take A-Chan. Uh, just because, again, I want to make sure we're getting running backs. Uh, you could even talk me into ETN as well. I, I, I'm not in love with ETN, but I do definitely like the idea of starting two running backs out the gate in this format on this site. And I do think that there's a pretty big fall off from ETN to the rest of these guys. But as we said as well with the blueprint, there's going to be running back value like super, super late. 
but none that I'd really want in my RB2 spot in a hero RB build, which by the way, we're talking through uh, draft strategies like hero RB and double hero RB. I have videos breaking down all of those. There should be a playlist on the channel called uh, draft strategy videos. Let's see. I think that it would be a travesty if A-Chan can't make it back to us. And if he doesn't, it'll be a really tough conversation between ETN and like Marvin Harrison Jr., there goes Pittman. Dude, Pittman on these sites is crazy. I, I in a in a a non wide receiver hungry format, taking Michael Pittman at in the second round, when again you can get Jalen Waddle, Malik Neighbors in the fourth, Cooper Cup in the fourth, uh the opportunity cost I just won't understand. There goes ETN. Don't snipe us on HN, please. And he goes HN? No. That's brutal. But see, that's why we went running back over, um, you know, Tyree Kill or CeeDee Lamb there early. Damn, that sucks. All right, we're going to take our medicine here and just go Marvin Harrison. God, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. I would have loved HN. We could have started two running backs out the gate, but I think we'll be fine. Now this is the time to kind of be very mindful of the wide receivers we're taking here, but I think we're kind of in a spot. I don't know. None of these running backs stick out. You could talk me into third round Kelsey, but we're going to get like fifth round Trey McBride later on. Um, so we take Marv. Nico is probably who I'm eyeing up next, but you could talk me into Devontae over Nico if you wanted to. There goes Metcalf. Damn, and there goes Nico. We get sniped on both. That's crazy. All right, we're going to go Devontae Adams then. I, I'm not going to complain about third round Devontae. That's fine. All right, so now we have both of our receivers. We have Brees Hall as our hero RB. And we'll see what comes back at the 4-5 turn. That sucks. I would have loved I would have loved A Chan Nico there. I will say that that would have been my ideal start. Would have been Brees. I mean, we we've we've pounded that drum. We've hammered that drum, however you want to say it, of uh Brees A Chan Nico Collins starts, but that would have been fun to keep it on brand, but we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can kind of get the fall to us in terms of that uh, RB2. And I will say as well, like I said earlier, I wouldn't get too cute with the uh, the blueprint receivers, right? I might, I'll pull that up now, actually. You can see with the blueprint receivers, I know that we're like super zoomed out, but with the blueprint receivers here, I know it's like, okay, Waddle's in the fourth round and these guys are all in the fourth. I think all of them are even values in the third round. And if like, you know, no good running back's going to be on the board in the third round, if you want to go tight end or quarterback, you absolutely can. But I'm fine taking any of them in the third, like we just saw um, with that Cooper Cup pick. I, I wouldn't feel pressured to go away from those receivers in the third. I think that that's something to also note with this blueprint is not be like, okay, I'm not going to take any of these guys until the round um, that's in the blueprint, if that makes sense. All right, we're coming back around here. This is where it gets tough. We already took two wide receivers early. Again, we know all we really need to do is take like four to five max in this format. Um, definitely important to note, we're going to like some tight ends and quarterbacks at the turn here. There goes Devontae Smith. I think really the only wide receiver target we have hanging around is Malik Neighbors. Um, it's pretty much a tiebreaker between Malik Neighbors, some of the tight ends that are going to be available here. Damn, and neighbors, neighbors gets taken before us. Okay, so I'm actually kind of happy we took so many receivers there. Um, huh, so we have two teams in between us and this next pick. Lamar is already gone. You have Diggs as the best receiver on the board right now, like in a tier of his own. I'm almost tempted if Diggs makes it to us, I might just take Diggs and then have the, uh, the option here of he goes Mahomes. I mean, Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts are still both on the board here. Um, and then still some, like, really good tight end options. I mean, Diggs in the flex would be pretty nasty. And then Zamir White in the fourth round. Jeez. So we have two quarterbacks we like. I don't mind Trey McBride or Mark Andrews, but I don't think I have to take one of them here. We're going to go Diggs and hope one of the quarterbacks fall back to us. And if they don't, then we'll probably just take a tight end. I think that that's where I'm at. So we'll go digs. Now we're stacked through the flex. Can still take one to two more wide receivers by the end of this thing, but I do feel really good about what we have in terms of depth and 
where we're at in terms of wide receiver. You could have talked me into Kenneth Walker there. I don't mind Kenneth Walker, but late fourth, I don't know that we needed to, especially over Diggs and over the elite quarterbacks. There goes Josh Allen, and then we're going to be on the clock here. And we get, dude, fifth round Jalen Hurts. I mean, sign me up. Sign me up for that. We're stack. I mean, we're stacked everywhere. We're through five rounds. We have Jalen Hurts, Brees Hall, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Adams, Defon Diggs in the flex. We'll worry about uh, RB2 here in a second. Don't get worried. But I like where we're at. We're going to worry about RB2. We'll, we'll worry about uh, tight end on the way back. In terms of our targets here, so we're going to be picking next in the sixth round. We will have, I mean, Trey McBride might come back. Don Kincaid might come back. Kyle Pitts might come back. Uh, we'll be looking at James Conner at the turn. We'll have receiver options as well if we'd like them. There goes McBride. So I do actually want to speak on that before our next turn. Kenneth Walker was an interesting pick there, and I think if the board fell differently, I would have been inclined to go with that. But to me, Diggs and Hurts were just in a tier ahead, and I would just rather, instead of kind of submitting, of course I could have submitted to the room, but to me that didn't feel like a tiebreaker, right? We talked about, okay, if it's a tie then tie goes to the, the running back or quarterback or whatever. To me with Diggs, it wasn't a tie to Kenneth Walker. If Diggs was gone, then sure. If you want to talk through like T Higgins or Tank Dell, then the tie goes to Kenneth Walker. But I'd rather get, to me, a higher tier player in Stephon Diggs. And now it feels like through five, we have like legit, really, really good options. All right, so we're next up here. Or not next up. We're up in like four picks, three picks. A little bit of a run on tight ends going. We have Pitts gone. We have Rashi Rice gone. I'm personally going to be looking at like... I would love if we could get Kittle here. Could get another receiver to put on the bench if we'd like to. We can get a running back. The running back's available. We're looking at like Najee Harris. Which I don't mind Najee Harris. Um, there goes Brooks. How far down these? Wow. So Najee's behind Jalen Warren on these, huh? Let's see. We're praying for George Kittle here, by the way. Yeah, okay. So we get we get Kittle. I mean, now we're through six. I feel like we're looking pretty damn good. Haven't drafted anything to the bench yet. Jalen Warren gets snap picked on us. Um... Now, in a league this shallow, you could give me, you could definitely talk me into just taking Najee and just sort of biting that bullet. Because we know we're going to get wide receiver values later on, as much as it's going to be tough to pass on the wide receiver value that we like. But yeah, we're going to take seventh round Najee Harris here. And to me, that works. I, I mean, I love Najee Harris in the seventh. I take him as high as the sixth. So we'll take him here. We're filling out the starting lineup. What wide receiver value would have been here? Nothing crazy. I guess Amari Cooper. I think the 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 2v2, and I'm, I'm curious where you guys stand here, it would have been Najee and Diggs or uh, Kenneth Walker and Amari Cooper. I think that's a close one. I think that's a close one. I don't mind the Najee side of that, but I could see uh, preferring the other side. I mean, Amari Cooper in the seventh round is pretty damn ridiculous, uh, but to me, so is Najee in this format. So uh, I'm happy with that. We filled out the starting lineup. I usually do try and get some wide receivers on the bench, but in this format, just two wide receiver, one flex, there's no reason to get too crazy. And according to the blueprint, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have options like JSN, Lad McConkey in the eighth, Roma Dunze and Xavier Worthy in the ninth. So we'll probably get one or two of like Roma Dunze, Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas, JSN uh, in the next round. We'll hammer out some running backs. We know we're going to get some values at running back like Chase Brown later on, Rico Dowdle, maybe Raheem Mostert comes back. So that's where my head is at right now. Dang. I would have loved it. If Javante made it back, I would have loved that. He did not make it back. We're looking through what we're going to do now. There goes Spears. There goes Jaden Reed. Um, we are probably going to end up taking some interesting running backs that we could definitely take if we want. Eighth round Tony Pollard, I think you can do much you can do much worse than that, to be honest. 
Um, I mean, Spears goes... This is probably like the last running back in a tier for me, and I don't really want Singletary. And we have a ton of receivers we like that I think will get even more of them to come back to us. Uh, so let's do this. We're going to take... Let's do this. We're going to take Pollard off the bench as like another RB2 option here. Because we do, I mean, what? It's going to be round 9, round 10. We took so many wide receivers early, I don't feel inclined to have to take two, like wide receivers through the flex plus 2. There goes Marquise Brown. Um, and then we're going to take, you know, you could talk me into like JSN, Odunze, whatever. But we're actually just going to take Worthy. He's my best ranked player. We'll see what makes it back. Uh, I don't feel a ton of pressure to not go with a rookie. I'd rather aim for late season upside because we're going to be so stacked with Diggs, Devontae, Marvin Harrison Jr. already um, that I'm fine playing it that way. And I'm not crazy about Tony Pollard per se, but he was like my next highest ranked running back. And like in this format in the eighth round, I'm fine just taking a swing on him just in case if like Najee's not that great. It'll, it's going to open us up to have some more flexibility down the line here. Um, again, you could have talked me into doubling up on like Rome and Worthy. But I think that we're going to like what comes back to us at receiver. And if we don't, we can just take a running back instead. Because uh, I don't really feel the need to be super, super wide receiver rich here. All right. We were trying to get Brian Thomas Jr. to fall back to us. I don't know. We were in a, we were in a tough spot there. And like a kind of a hero RB-ish type build where if we didn't take running back at that last pick we would have had a pretty steep fall off from Najee, right down to like Corum, Benson, Charbonnet, all of these options. To me, again, Pollard was the best receiver I, or the best running back I had on the board. I figured we don't want to be too, too weak at RB2. We can kind of rotate between Najee and Pollard, but you can definitely say if you wanted to go back in time to take a receiver instead of Worthy here. But again, in like a two wide receiver, one flex, and we already have digs in the flex spot, I didn't feel a ton of pressure there. Uh, to go that direction. So let's take a running back. I think now we kind of just hammer out RB2 types. Uh, we will take... What, Corum, Charbonnet, Algier, all good options. Let's see. There goes Hubbard. Let's do... What, Corum, Sharb... This decision shouldn't be that difficult, but we are going to go with Corum. Rico Daddle gone yet? No, Rico Daddle's still hanging around. Um, so like at this pick, we're going to take Daddle, uh, just hammer out some running backs. Because we're going to have enough bench spots to get some other guys we like later. Um, I like Sharp, but I kind of do want to take Daddle here. I'm going to take Sharp and see if we can get Daddle to fall back. We'll see. All right, so we're going to be back on the clock here in a second. We are looking at... Damn, Rico Dowdle goes from out from under us. Jalen Wright is still hanging around. We'll probably take Jalen Wright here. Just in terms of, like, the best player available. But I don't mind taking that Pollard because 8th round Pollard, to me, in these home leagues is fine. And then also... Let's take Jalen Wright. But then also... You know, our only weakness on this team, right? We have Jalen Hurts, we have Brees Hall, we have Marv, Devontae Adams, George Kittle, Stephon Diggs. Our only weakness on this team is RB2. And I'd rather just spend most of our bench on trying to hammer out an RB2. And then also, in this format, wide receivers through the flex plus one or two, and we got one in worthy. It doesn't have to be two, especially if we take three receivers in the first four rounds. Um, now here, we're looking at A.D. Mitchell, we're looking at Wicks. Man, I like Mitchell and Leggett, but we're actually just going to take Dontavion Wicks here. I take him I take him in almost every draft. We're going to take Wicks in the 13th round. I really like that pick. Um, and then we'll kind of see how the rest of this goes. I think I'll, I'll meet up with you guys in a second. I will say, too, a big, big note. All right, so you guys saw we took elite quarterback in Jalen Hurts. We took, to me, an elite quarterback in George Kittle. I will not be spending any bench spots on tight end or quarterback. My bench spots will be solely lottery ticket running backs you hope that an injury happens or a role emerges and then one of these guys you can either put into your starting lineup or you can trade away and get massive massive value right finding next year's Kyron Williams or Devon Achan type late round studs you're not going to find that with 
a backup quarterback or a backup tight end. They're just going to clog your roster. They'll never be in your lineup over Jalen Hurts or over a George Kittle. It's a different story if instead of Jalen Hurts, that was Trevor Lawrence, then fine, run two quarterbacks. Instead of George Kittle, this was Dallas Goddard, fine, run two tight ends. Uh, and then I'll also say, you're going to see a lot of these teams taking defense and kicker. My advice to you, taking defense kicker is crazy outside of the last two rounds. And even outside of the last two rounds, me personally, the way that I'm going to build my teams is here, we're just going to take running backs all the way through the bench. We're not going to take a kicker. We're not going to take a defense. And we will just, right before week one game start, we will pick up a kicker and a defense and drop a running back. Because I want next year's Zach Moss where like something happens and then boom, you get a, a pretty big bump from an injury like that happening now we already have so many run, uh, wide receivers on this team we're probably gonna take a running back here oh let's take dude ray davis is a huge value in these uh but okay never mind so you can't take a running back instead of a kicker it's gonna force us to take kicker and defense so i'm gonna take those and then i'll i'll see you when we're done here all right I, i'm gonna be honest i didn't give much thought for kicker and defense you know i took uh Bengals defense i like subvert down as my like weekly streaming uh, service for defense and kicker and I guess we will take Dustin Hopkins for Cleveland as our other kicker but there is the final team I'll zoom in here if you guys want to see it up close and personal but if this was a home league draft I would feel really really good about it uh, we have a stacked lineup right we have Jalen Hurts, Brees Hall, Najee Harris, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Adams, George Kittle, Stephon Diggs and our real only weakness here is our flexes monster we have Monster receivers. Brees Hall is a stud. Jalen Hurts is an elite quarterback. We got in the fifth round. George Kittle's an every week starting tight end with huge, huge spike week upside. And then our only real weakness is Najee Harris, so I still am fine starting every week. But we filled out our running backs on the bench to make sure if Najee Harris isn't a stud or if one of our running backs gets hurt, we're in a good spot. We have Tony Pollard, who I would be comfortable starting in any given week. Uh, Blake Corum. Zach Charbonnet is more of like your handcuff guys with Jalen Wright. And then Ray Davis, somebody who's getting some buzz, is like the goal line back in Buffalo. And then a couple of upside swings at receiver. We took Xavier Worthy, so we satisfied our need of wide receivers through the flex, right? Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, plus one or two by round 10. We get Xavier Worthy in round nine. That is four. Four to five by round 10, you're fine, especially if you draft him as early as we did. Um, and then we also took another upside swing on Dontavion Wicks, one of my favorite late round wide receivers. So that's the final team. Again, that is how I would approach an ESPN Fantasy Football League by position. We made the ESPN blueprint you can find below in the comment section. We also used my rankings, which you can find over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ron Stewart. But I just hope you enjoyed this video. I hope all of you guys enjoy your drafts this weekend. Go out there, have a blast. It's what it's all about, you know, just drafting with the buddies, having a good time. Um, I hope that I could help you out in your home league endeavors, as always. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.